Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. Baseline in their head right now. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good morning. It's Wednesday. That it's means it's Wednesday. idiotic day. And the uh, the weather reports are rolling in in the chat. Seems like it's kind of gray and lousy in a lot of the uh, I don't know the eastern portion anyway of North America, I should say. Ah, so. Yeah, Jim, yeah, yeah. I did not know you were in Nashville. I love that town. <laughs> Just got to say. <laughs> Every time Brent goes, he comes home with a new guitar. <laughs> and I've only been once, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I got that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, it's that kind of a day. We got a guest today with us, Chris. Who's hanging out with us? Folks, we have Nick Floro back with us. Nick has been with us a couple of times, but Nick, believe it or not, there may actually be some folks in our chat who haven't had a, a chance to meet you yet. So uh, introduce yourself to our folks. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm a uh, learning architect, uh, which basically means I help um, people <laughs> understand the technology and figure out how to create amazing learning experiences. Uh, and we have fun doing it. <laughs> and that's key. Fun yeah. is, um, yeah, fun is, is super important for sure. And it's yeah. not just you, it's your company. You've got people working for you, right? And, and you do all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, we've got a small team, been around for 30 years now, which is blows my mind every time I think about that. And then, <laughs> it's like, I'm not that old. And then uh, my favorite program that we've done to date is um, a educational product for kids, helping them to think critically. Um, we've got about 2 million kids hitting it every year, learning how to write and analyze content. Um, and we get to build out a new version every year. So it keeps us fresh. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. Yeah, that's very, an awesome very cool. project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so today we're we're going to talk about a bunch of different cool things because, um, of course, one of the things I think that makes your job fun in particular is you get to explore and play and test drive all kinds of uh, different you know tools and things, etc. And so you've brought a bunch of those today, and we're kind of calling it the the Christmas gift list, the the Christmas gift edition of, of, of idiotic here. Things that we oh maybe want to buy for our fellow instructional designers or <clears throat> ourselves, you know, our, our own stocking <laughs> stuffers maybe or whatever, but cool things that, uh, that maybe some of us haven't bumped into yet. Um, what's the first thing we're going to talk about? Let's so the first, right area, in. <laughs> first area is um, all about you, uh, you being us, um, mm -hmm. but the ideal of uh, adding a new camera to your setup. So whether you're using a laptop or a workstation, I've got two cameras. Um, one is by Elgato. And they've got one that's called Facecam. We're going to go uh, product things today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. Um, they've got two cameras. They've got the Facecam Pro and the Facecam. Um, what I love about them is that on Mac and Windows, you have all kinds of controls. And in the old days, you'd have to have a big camera. And I don't have mine on my desk right now. Um, but that might run several hundred dollars. And today, for you know, two to 300 bucks, you can get a beautiful camera that works great in low light. Um, some of them will follow you. So as you move around, um, Apple has that um, functionality now where if you're using an iPad or a Apple Studio display, um, it will actually pan with you as you move. And I'm not using one right now, so you don't see me panning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, uh, so it's working for me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you just move your head yeah, the old-fashioned way. Uh, it's a little harder when you have you know, a bunch of people on the, on the site with you. Um, the other one that does that also is um, called Insta360 Link, and got to get it lined up. 
Um, but this one has that built-in pivot functionality. So if you find yourself having to stand up while you're facilitating an event um, and or moving around, writing on a board, um, you know, being more uh, mobile, um, this works really well because it works on both platforms. But what I love about both product lines is that the software that it comes with just makes it so easy to zoom in, adjust your colors. Um, it works pretty well in low light. Um, but those are both great product lines. And what we're going to do at the end of the session is share a link so you guys can, um, anyone who's watching, can uh, get to these different products and learn more about them. Let's, cool. Before you move on to the next set, let's jump to the chat group. And I want to ask everybody, what webcam are y'all currently using? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> ever, ever since I saw that Elgato, the new Elgato one, I was like, oh, total envy. I want to upgrade because I've had this C920 like for ever like ever since it first came out and i'm like ah it still works fantastic though that's the thing i, I, I have a hard time justifying the new expense when it when it, it just works it does so well but yeah mm -hmm. that new that elgato looks uh yeah where, where it, it really sweet. helps is the low light um oh. and the quality just kind of snaps up if you are okay with that <laughs> like i need a little blur but um <laughs> uh, it's like oh my god so much details i'm like where'd all my hair go um <laughs> i'm still amazed i'm like is my hair's gone is yeah. that what you're using right now yes i've got the elgato face okay. cam currently yeah i should have mm. known uh, yeah <laughs> what, what, uh, as people are sharing, one of the other really cool features is the, um, the Apple products has a new mode um, where you can use your iPhone if you have oh, an iPhone. Yeah. Um, but it also allows you to, if you put it above your screen, um, it will show your desk. So um, I know when you guys have Kevin online, he does the sketches with you guys. And that would be a great way for him to be able to show him drawing without having to have all the special gear and cameras. Um, you just hit a button and it just switches to that mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, lots of lots of name brands being dropped. Um, I, uh, Dana has mentioned um, that she Dana is using a Polaroid, so that's that's good quality right there. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble with the video feed is you got to shake it <laughs> so that other people can see it. Ah, uh, yes, um, but you can do some uh, overlays with your finger, right? <laughs> right, uh, yeah, right, right. Blur, While it's blurring. drying, <laughs> blurring it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and lots of mentions too of the laptop, which is actually what I'm running on today. The laptop uh, camera on my mac and it's Just, not embarrassing no. you go ahead and no. use that they work great you use the tool yeah 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 For here's sure. a quick tip though so when you're using your laptop camera don't just set it on the tables, put it up on a stack of books, right? Because when you're using your webcam, you need to get that webcam up to about eye level. So nobody would ever know that you're using your laptop if you just raised your laptop up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Pro tip. Trade secret. I actually have my laptop because I want the neutral background of my wall instead of the sheer chaos of my <laughs> office as a whole. Um, I'm actually using a music stand. I have a um, music stand tilted you know, flat and the laptop sitting on it. That's how that's, you know, there, you there go. we go. Pro tip for the day. Number two. <laughs> Perfect. Lots of Logitech's uh, dropping in. Oh, mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah, hard, hard to go wrong with that. I've been promoting the Logitech ever, ever since it came out, ever since I started doing this live streaming thing. So they were the hot mm -hmm. ticket for since, since the early days. All right, let's keep the show moving on. What's next, Nick? Um, phones. <laughs> um, holiday season's a great time to upgrade your phone. Yeah, maybe you're, you've got a available rebate or whatever, or swapping it out. Um, lots of fun. Um, I've got a iPhone 14 um, that I love. And um, one of the advantages, if you're still hanging out with the older phone that's a couple years old now, is that the latest phones have a bunch of new features. Um, the biggest one being the camera. But if you ever find that you need to be able to snap a photo of a product or a thing, or you're at one of the conferences in person, um, it's a great way to just capture high quality data and be able to share that with your team or just remember like, oh yeah, I've got to pick up that food item this week, <laughs> um, what, what is it called? <laughs> um, I always forget. Um, Not it, to mention using that darn camera to take shots of uh, when you're doing your instructional design work, right? When you're, you know, it's like, I think we often forget what a powerful little tool our, our phones are for production, for, for taking great shots of processes. If you do manufacturing training, whatever, you know, you don't always need a whole experience expensive crew to go out there just grab that phone take some video take some images whatever you need 
Yeah. yeah. My, um, I was flipping through my photos on my, um, well, technically my iPad, but my phone is the same, same case. The sheer quantity of screen captures that I've got, um, you know, in my Twitter feed where someone's recommending, you know, a book or a movie or music. And I, so I go back through every few months and kind of go, what the heck was I going to do next? And, and anyway, just, I, you know, don't have the mental capacity to type it into a note. So you just take the screen capture and, and try to remember it that way. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know. thank goodness that the app, the photo, <clears throat> the photos app, sorts by screenshots so you can just go into your photos and hit just screenshots and then then at least you only have to scroll back through your screenshots instead of scrolling back through uh, all of your photos to find that wanted screenshot <laughs> which is what i did for a long time i'm embarrassed to say <laughs> until, <laughs> until i'm like oh yeah there's that screenshots folder one of the amazing features that Apple and Google have now as well is that when you take those photos, it can actually read the copy that's in your photo. So if you do a search for a uh, mm. laptop or whatever, it can recognize products or things as well as words, um, which is great if you have a URL or a phone number, you can just click or touch and it calls. Um, makes life easier. <laughs> uh, it's all right. it's about. One other that makes exciting... it a lot. It makes it a lot easier because then you don't have to add those notes and all that metadata. It automatically, basically, it it's automatically creates that metadata by doing that, right? Exactly. One less thing you have to worry about. One less thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we get to save time. We get to listen to a, a great show like this. <laughs> um, the other uh, exciting thing you might have been hearing some of the buzz over the last three or four years around the foldable phones. And um, Samsung has introduced their Galaxy Fold 4, um, which is really incredible because it's a six inch phone, but it doubles into a 12 inch device. So if you're looking to upgrade a tablet and or your phone, that might be something and you're in the Android ecosystem, that might be something that you wanna check out because it allows you to multitask with two elements. Um, you can have like Excel and Google Mail open or whatever um, and you know, watching a podcast or a screencast and uh, you know, taking some notes as well. Um, but I'm really excited about that. And uh, me being in the Apple ecosystem for so long now, I can't wait for Apple to do something like that. <laughs> so does, does the screen actually fold or is it just, is it legitimately two screens? I don't know. I don't, I've yeah, it's seen actually, one before, but I didn't look closely enough. Yeah, the newest generation, I don't have one here, but um, it actually has a little um, foldable mechanism in the center. So as you unfold it, um, they say it lasts about, or it lasts at least 200,000 times, which sounds like a lot, but I'm like, if you open and close that 30, 40 times a day, that adds up quick. Um, yeah. But it basically just, yeah, doubles. So when it's open, you can't tell the, the fold is there okay. um, with the latest generation. So that that's what excites me. and. You might have seen some of the newer laptops from Samsung, and I think LG has one, Acer has one, but they're actually turning the screens uh, into typable objects. So like I know Apple has a technology where you can type on the tablet and it gives you feedback. So rather than looking like a keyboard or being a physical keyboard, you have that quick feedback there. Um, hmm. So it's it's kind of crazy. They're like, that's not going to work. <laughs> I remember... Um... I remember in the early days of uh, mid earliest generations, I guess, of, of iPads, very, uh, and it's like a decade ago anyway. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm picturing the location, right? That's how I'm anchoring myself in time. Um, Apple actually had a patent that they applied for for touch screens on the back of a device. So you could be holding a tablet, but not have to put your hands over. You could be manipulating sensors on the back of it to, you know, make selections as you're, you know, navigating a website. And that's, and I like like one of those threads where, hey, look at this new patent that Apple has applied for. So it's a, a, a thing that they apparently did, uh, you know, patent, but uh, doesn't seem to have emerged as a, as a as a usable thing. So it reminds me like an accordion. Like yeah, <laughs> you're really the old things. It's like da, da, da. Uh, yeah, Apple That's has probably a, what they um... were going to call it, like, <laughs> the I accordion. <laughs> um, it's always oh, fun. Oh come to look on, back that was a good joke. <laughs> We get to give, uh, uh, that's a good love. joke, accordion to Brett. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, anyway. Wait a minute, how come uh, my darn drum roll isn't sounding? Oh, because I have the audio turned down. Uh, Dang it, I'm missing the great cues. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, I got it. All right. Um, 
right. I'm, I think I'm missing all sorts of great conversations and what people are sharing in the chat. You guys help me keep up here in case I'm missing anything good. We got the yeah. Galaxy Flip going, CMO. That's awesome. Yeah. Maybe we have them. We should have people others on share their phones and like give us a demo <laughs> <laughs> in the future. Yeah, one of the things the chat doesn't let people do is submit a photo. So yeah, yeah. Next year, next year. All right. So past phones. Yeah. Let's let's move on to what's next in our in our good. Related to that, I'm gonna um, recommend also looking at tablets. And um, one of my favorite is the Apple iPad Mini. Um, which is great because it's a little bit bigger than a phone, but it can fit easily in a bag, a backpack. Um, it's very portable. Um, one of the things I love about the Apple ecosystem is that everything is so connected and works so well. But yeah. Apple allows you to use, if you have an Apple laptop, you can use your iPad as a second screen, um, which is really great. So you can move your mouse or trackpad cursor right over there and be able to touch or edit or vice versa. Um, so not only can you use it as a screen, you can actually use it as a separate device. So you might have email or, um, you know, an another website on that device, but instead of like moving your hand over there, which takes a whole 10 seconds and you get distracted from your main device, um, you're able just to move your cursor over and interact with it. So you can have two devices going at once, um, which just makes life easier. Um, yeah, but for sure. So I, um, when they first come out, those, the, the new iPads, um, they can be a little bit pricey, but what I discovered was, and I don't have any of this, this thing called patience uh, <laughs> and, and waiting. I, I have very little of that, but I have been able to hold off. And there is a non-Apple Apple store, like I think it's called Mac Media here in town in Phoenix, in Scottsdale, actually. And um, every once in a while, they get refurbished stuff in. And so um, I've got on hold. I'm waiting for them to get their next round of seventh generation iPads, like the full size ah. iPads for 250 bucks. And I'm thinking that's to amazing. myself, yeah, I'm like, that's a, that's a decent price for a nice full size iPad. It, yes, it's what, three generations back, but uh, you know, heck, when you're pinching pennies, you gotta do what you can. <laughs> Apple also has a refurb area um, as well as Microsoft and other manufacturers. But what's great is that they'll give you the full warranty. Um, yeah. So something you might want to also check, you know, based on price and what you're getting. Um, always fun. I, I, Good to I, know. I, yeah. Yeah. Someone mentioned um, monitor stands and one of the ones I'm going to add it to the chat. It's going to link to Amazon, but you can check out the product. Um, it's called the Moft, M-O-F-T. Um, and what's cool about this, it's like an origami stand. Um, so if you find yourself want to go to the kitchen or the other room, um, you can have it be on an angle to put your laptop or device on, but you can also have it as a stand-up device. So if you're at a counter or your kitchen table and you want to be a little bit more mobile, um, you can fold it in different ways to uh, allow it to be more adjustable to your particular needs. So if you're doing a conference call and you want to be standing to just to keep legs going, blood pumping, um, I found that's really an inexpensive way of doing it. Um, it's 55 bucks. It'll fold up into a bag and you know, it's portable if you're going on the road. <laughs> that is super cool. I'm looking at that right now. That is really cool. Now, now to stick with our theme of buy something managers for your team, this would be kind of a cool thing to pick up for everybody on your team. Yes. Um, highly recommend e even the, you know, depending on budgets and resources, um, you could look at software or a couple of the books that we're going to talk about. Um, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute as well. Yeah, yeah. First, it's all about yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> what can you buy yourself to get make yourself, yourself more productive? Free. And <laughs> <laughs> um, that is cool. Um, right. Go going back to your personal studio area. Um, one of the things that is very exciting to me and makes you more productive is the ideal of a product from Elgato called Stream Deck. Uh, Brent, you mentioned you're using one now every day. They just introduced a new one called the Stream Deck Plus, which I added into the channel. And this is kind of building off some of the other products that have been introduced in between over the last couple of years. But this one has dials. Um, so you can actually dial up audio or volumes as well as uh, you have your normal buttons that you can click on. And then there's a slider too. So they're taking like the best of Apple, the best of some third-party products, and they've kind of mixed it all into their next generation. 
Cool. Yeah, I got the small one. That's actually the medium. Oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Wow. Um, well, yes, you're, you're going on <laughs> up. More important than I, yeah. I spend more money than I thought I did. <laughs> um, what's great about that line of products um, is the software. So whether you're on Mac or Windows, yeah. you can configure every icon and color and link and or series of macros. So if you want to start a uh, cast a Zoom meeting and you want to end it and or you want to open a file or you want to do three things, you can queue it up really easy. And what's great is that you don't have to be a super techie person to do it. Um, I, you know, I find I can set up something seconds before a meeting and you know have it perform or react or adjusting based on whatever those parameters are that you need to address. Um, yeah, I, I never that that was one of the reasons why when you mentioned this um, the last time that we were talking about it, it's why I bought it because I didn't know when I was originally saw the product and whatever I thought you could just like assign one thing to each button and it was kind of maybe pre assigned and you did what didn't have much flexibility to it. But then once I started thinking and hearing about the macros and it's like, oh, push one button. And so I have a start button for idiotic. It opens up, it, it, it just pushed the one button, opens up the browser directly to our idiotic page. It opens up loopback. It opens up the fair Farago for the audio clips. And uh, it totally sets up my whole desktop just like that. In one click, everything is up hmm. and ready to go. And then all I have to do is start testing stuff. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's it's way more flexible than you would ever believe. Oh, and this was the other thing. I thought it was just limited to the number of physical buttons on the screen, but you can um you have I forget what they call it, but tabs or panels or or something like that. Pages. So, pages, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you could just you just shift through it. So literally you have practically unlimited number of things you can do. I have one page set up for when I'm in email, all the quick things that I want to do, quick response, it's a button, it makes an email, it puts out some pre-written text. I, every time I'm in Zoom or Teams, I have another page specifically for those, for things I want to do while I'm in that. Yeah, it's super cool. I'm a huge fan. That's awesome. Um, I think, one I, think all, I think all of our online training professionals would approve. I think mm -hmm. as, yes. uh, you know, like Cassie Labori and, uh, you know, some of the other folks, uh, Joe Cook. I don't know. She's, I don't know if Joe's hanging out with us today. She uh, sometimes hangs out with us from the UK, but um, yeah, it would be great at producing live events. Mm. Um, one other element to help yourselves are lights. Um, so Elgato has a whole series. There's a bunch of stuff you can find at Walmart and Amazon and so on. Um, Elgato has, what I love about them again as a company is the software connection. So whether you're on Mac or Windows, you can control the lighting um, density um, as well as the color or tone. And they started about 50 bucks and they go up to 200 bucks depending on how many you need and um, whether it's the Air or the Mini. Um, those work really well. The other one is the, um, I gotta find it again. <laughs> Logitech has a super small one that's uh, only 49 bucks. And um, they, what's nice is it sits on top of your laptop. So it's super easy to move it if you're going upstairs, downstairs again, or you're going to the office. Um, but if you're working in a dark area or room, um, that makes life a lot easier. And I'll find that link, um, here it is. LED lights. It's called the Litra Glow. Um, yeah, Litra. Those are nice Glow. because you can like you can dial them up and down, right? Like, yes. Like, like very subtly, like you can. Like, you can control like, through your software or yeah. the Stream Deck as well, yeah. so you can hit a button, turn it on, off, and then control the density. One of the nice things if you stay within the Elgato um, ecosystem is that that dial that you have now on the Stream Deck Plus, you can dial up your lighting like more intensity more sun yeah <laughs> chris what lighting uh, are you using to make yourself look fantastic today um in addition to my natural radiance <laughs> um I, I have actually uh, just over there I, I do have a ring light it's a no name brand um it's like about a foot across oh you got the big one i have the tiny one mm. 
Yeah, I, I would show it, except it's just it's out of reach. But mine is, um, yeah, mine's like on a on a kind of looks like a microphone stand or whatever, like that kind of um, yeah, you know, that's tubular stand. And it, it, the the switch is down uh, below my feet here, where I have to plug it in. But I, I can color change all that from the you know from the dial too. So I just can't you know synchronize it to my Stream Deck and <laughs> mood. <laughs> I'm happy today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, um, yeah. What's another, uh, a couple of books, something inexpensive awesome. that you can get a stocking stuffers and so on. Um, one of my favorite books that I'm reading right now is The History of the Future, um, which is actually the story of Oculus um, before Facebook gobbled it up, uh, or now Meta. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a great read because it talks about the 18 year old um, geek <laughs> that invented it, that had a passion for it, and uh, he would go to technology junkyards and um, find all the older um, virtual reality headsets that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, buy them for a couple hundred dollars, and he kept taking them apart and reassembling them, and that's how the Oculus was born, um, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. But it also talks about uh, how they record it by Facebook and the whole story behind the scenes, how they had to get up the SDK and develop hardware. Um, but lots of fun. Uh, mm. Good for you. You know, um, one of the things that most people don't realize is that in the very earliest days of, of VR, of course, we didn't have um, we didn't have flat screens yet, so everybody had to walk around with cathode ray tubes. You know, uh, <laughs> which required a lot of extra bracing. You know, you had to stand in a rack to hold that to the, the, the CRT. Yeah, so so that was one of the first challenges they had to overcome in that technology. Yep, yep, uh, it's true. true <laughs> fact based, fact based knowledge here. Yep, facts. I remember the first touch screen um, that we got way back in the '90s was two thousand dollars just for the touch screen. It sat on top of a thirteen-inch monitor, and the technology was so crazy that you actually um, bolted it on top of the monitor, so it expanded the case. It looked awful, <laughs> uh, but it worked. <laughs> um, it's crazy what we had to do back then uh, to make things work. <laughs> Just to use the cool stuff. Uh, it's right. <laughs> um, so do we have a, a link for that book? Yes, I will cool. get that to you. Yep, yep. Um, throw that in the channel here. Um, one other book that is great is, um, actually, I'll get you this first, The History of the Future. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. It's also available on Audible, which is great. Um, another great one is called Built. Um, it's the Tony Fidel story, who was one of the original Apple team members that invented or introduced, worked on the iPhone um, over the years. And he's most recently um, built the Nest platform and ecosystem, which Google bought. Um, but he talks about that whole, um, the, the reason why he made it, the nest was he had a ski place um, where, the, you know, by the time they drove there from California, uh, every weekend, it would be like 20 degrees inside. So he would always freak out that I, he had to go and warm it up and it would take overnight to warm it up. So that's why the nest was created to solve that mm. problem, um, which is so cool. But again, it talks First about world the history. Problem, though. <laughs> <laughs> we should all have ski places. Um, but I, I love the Nest as a product. And as a, as a Canadian in the metric system, I'm hearing you say it's 20 degrees, and I'm like, that's too warm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? I, like, I can't do that yet. Anyway. <laughs> I can't do the conversion. <laughs> so I need we're the just internationalizing a little bit. For the metric users, 20 is actually cold in Fahrenheit. <laughs> There's your lesson of the day. Right? There we go. <laughs> Nest. Uh, um, yes, I can confirm that. Yeah, that is cold. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Fidel's book is called Build, and it's um, just about his, you know, how he grew up and all the different companies he started and then worked at Apple and some of the things that happened there. Uh, but fascinating and just kind of gives you a look behind the scenes. And what I always love is you hear some of the craziness that takes place that we're, you know, we only see the wonderful, isn't that an amazing product? But you hear all the pain and suffering that went into the product and love <laughs> um, to make it so great. Um, the last one I'm going to recommend um, is called Hooked, and um, this one is how you can hook your users in a positive way, not mm -hmm. in the bad way, like some big companies like Facebook. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it talks about the psychology and uh, 
one of the products that I see use this method is called Noom, um, which is an amazing app that's available on Android and iOS for learning how to eat better and lose weight. Um, I started on it back in August and I've lost 30 pounds, um, which is uh, amazing. <laughs> and it's all through education. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I can't do this, but um, it's not, you, know, you eat what you want to eat and you learn about quantity and you know, what's good, what's bad. Um, I used to be a big soda drinker, but now no soda um, or only when I travel, <laughs> uh, I guess with soda. So um, there's always a catch. Yeah. And there's a great story. Um, if you want to learn, if you get inspired, I always get inspired by other people's stories, but Noom, uh, the inventor of that, um, ah, Patricia's sharing, she lost 40 pounds. Yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, cool, using Noom. yeah. Um, very cool. That's always a yeah, goal for over the winter season, right? Because we, bundle yeah. up <laughs> you can't do as much um out there um yeah so th those are fun and one other thing i'm going to highly recommend for your personal setup is a green screen um you guys all have and you know great office space and great setups um but a green screen allows you to be in your bedroom or the basement um and there's kinds that just a piece of paper you can paint the walls if you want to go inexpensive um but elgato has some great ones i've got one here that i can pull down it's like mounted to the ceiling and um, what's great about that is i can be anywhere or have my uh presentation behind me um, and those will run anywhere from 50 bucks to about 200 bucks. But if you're in a home setup um, and you have that luxury to invest, um, just gives you the power to do more creative, mm -hmm. um, which is great. Mine sits right behind me and mine pulls up from the ground though, instead yes. of pulling down from the ceiling. <laughs> Yes. I don't have too much. So I keep buying more stuff. So I run out of space. So I had to go to the ceiling. <laughs> it's either that or knock the wall down. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, my fear was if I did the ceiling version, because I thought that was cool, keeping everything off the ground. But then I, I, I'm always like, no, I want it right here. No, I want it right here. And if I mount it to the ceiling, then I can't move it around. I can't be as flexible as I want it to be. So I opted for the ground version. Yeah. That, um, it works great. That we, yeah, I've got one at home because we move it upstairs downstairs. Yeah, um, but it is good. I mean, I mean the the Zoom camera, like when you're on Zoom meetings and stuff, people still people use the automatic one where it, I guess it senses you against whatever background you have. But even yes. that works a lot better if you put the green screen behind you. You don't hmm. have all the artifacts and the and the Too weirdness much. that can happen. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's still, yeah, it's still worth. Yeah, it simplifies. The it, it would totally simplify the ability for that for whichever video tool you're using to pick you out against the background, right? It's a much a simpler contrast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, one other fun thing on the recreational side, um, I'm going to recommend that you might invest in a Nintendo Switch or an Xbox X or a PS5. Um, depending on your gaming style, if you're more of a casual gamer, I'd recommend the Nintendo Switch. They've got a new LED model that runs 250 to 300 bucks. Um, what's great about that is it's portable, like your phone or tablet, but you can also plug it into a TV or monitor if you're playing with the family. Um, depending on how many controllers you have, you can have four to six people playing some of the games or some great trivia games. That might be a fun show in the future. <laughs> invite people in. <laughs> uh, we do a virtual version of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. I was, I was sorry. I was just thinking the other. Um, I mean, not to you know backpedal on the um, on the green screen, but um, uh, I was using the uh, my green screen to create my own character to make me a character to put into my e-learning right and i just i just i'm trying to connect all of these different products to <laughs> things that we do right and that was the one thing that that i actually got it for was to do be able to do that i mean and to do you know live streaming stuff with the green screen and whatnot but to be able to go up and pose yourself or pose somebody else and say oh hey we can put you right into this e-learning if you want you know pointing at things yeah or whatever <laughs> you know you do do all the different poses capture somebody on that green screen then go into your app you knock out the background and then you can put that person over anything in your e-learning course so now you don't have to use the same old same old uh, you know, clip art people that you've been using forever that comes in the, you know, the pack that you bought, you could just make your own. Yes. 
that's awesome. Um, on the fun gaming side, you got the PS5 and the Xbox, which are a little bit bigger investment. They're about five hundred dollars each, four ninety nine. Um, it may take a couple of weeks to get one, depending on when you get in line. Um, but I, what what I love about them is um, just starting to play with the older kids um, with some of the games. They're so um, they pull you in into that story. And it's like being a movie, like watching a movie, but you're in the movie, so you get to participate and interact. Um, I think that's one of the nicer features of the PS5, where Xbox is more um, collaborative and you know playing whether it's a shoot 'em game or the uh, football or hockey or whatever, whichever one you want to play. Um, but it's crazy cool to see how it's evolved. When I was playing games in my seventh, eighth grade times, uh, we had the green screen. <laughs> and we had words on the screens. We didn't have color. Um, if you were lucky, you might have the black and white TV that you plugged into to have a bigger screen. But um, it's just so amazing to see how you can jump into these you know, um, collaborative, um, crazy worlds that in real time, they're rendering these different spaces. And whatever you do, you get to interact. And if you're looking for a fun game to play with a family, highly recommend the Lego Star Wars or the Lego Harry Potter series, if you've seen the movies or read the books. Um, so much fun, whether you've got a six-year-old all the way up, um, just fun because you get to jump into those worlds and it's available on all the different platforms, um, but it, you get to relive it. And uh, I've had a lot of fun with the a little fun ones. fun one so around our house at the holidays are the Jackbox games. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and now I can't even remember the name of it. It's like, it's a trivia game. You don't know Jack and... Um, all the other they, they've got a whole bunch of drawing games and all that kind of stuff and everybody uses it everybody connects like you run it on your tv through apple tv or whatever but then everybody connects on their phone and they get to make all their selections on the phone or the equiplash yeah there you go dan thank you yes. <laughs> or, or you or you draw if you have to draw a doodle you draw the doodle on your phone and it shows it up on the screen and people have to guess or whatever yeah it's there's those are super fun Especially if you've got a bunch of old people like me playing the games, <laughs> then uh, you know they, they can't quite engage. You in get to laugh. Yes, yes. You exactly. get to laugh, make fun of yourself. So. Yeah, exactly. Poke <laughs> exactly. fun at the family members. Yeah. Thank you, Jill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fibbage, that's the one. Uh, Fibbage is hilarious. That is super fun. Yeah, great for the whole family. Um, and I'm trying to I'm trying to connect these to learn uh, learning and development. Yeah. I'm having a hard time. <laughs> well, the, the, the the fun part is you're unplugging, so you're refreshing your brain. You can be more creative. Yes, and it, oh. um, the camera we were talking about at the beginning. Take a picture of what you're seeing. You might get an ideal instead of having just that standard multiple choice quiz or true false. You can turn it into a game and have some fun, uh, or instead at a company event or you know getting your team together to um, unplug. Yeah, get rejuiced. <laughs> um, have some fun. Um, one last thing where that usually at the holiday time we might be um, you know, subscribing to Disney or our favorite uh, channels um, that we need to subscribe to keep everyone happy and excited. Um, one of the things that I discovered this summer was YouTube TV, um, which basically allows you to kill the cable um, connection um and it'll it, it works amazingly well like you can basically say i like football and it'll record every football game around the world <laughs> that's on some kind of broadcast and you can watch it at your own leisure there's no limit to the amount of space it'll usually keep the recordings Pull for about two back weeks down nick for me Oops, sorry um ah, better. It, yeah it allows you to record and i get so excited um <laughs> uh yeah, you know, just by selecting a, a tagging, whether it's a game show or a TV show or the news, um, it'll record all of them, and then you can watch it back at your leisure. Um, you can watch it on your tablet, your phone, your TV, with all the different streaming devices we have today, from Apple TV to the Roku and so on. Um, works really well, especially if you're looking to cut costs a little bit. Um, so you can buy that camera. <laughs> it's all connected. <laughs> Do you have that, Chris? Um, no, I mean, we have the, uh, we, um, across our family, everybody seems to have a different subscription that everybody else shares. So we have all of the different streaming services basically covered, uh, through different, uh, you know, you know accounts, et cetera. So that, that's a budgeting trick that, uh, I'm sure other folks employ as well. <laughs> don't, don't tell anyone. 
<laughs> hey, look, I've they heard, let you set I've up for the users, people. right? You know, so. <laughs> but I, I think that 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 is kind of cool. But uh, you know, with the the YouTube TV, I just thought it was you wouldn't get commercials if you paid for the YouTube TV. You just you can it's just like watching regular YouTube, and you just don't get the ads anymore. That's what I thought. I didn't realize that you could tell it what to do, and it would record a bunch of stuff that isn't actually on YouTube either. It's, it's more for broadcast. So it, it runs, I think it's a little bit, you know, $60, $70 a month. Um, the only thing I wish they would have is like, I pay extra to kill the commercials or <laughs> like, I'll pay you yeah. for my time. Uh, it's like, remove them. Uh, like yeah. in the old days we had TiVo and I forget the other one that was before TiVo. Um, but it, it would allow you to skip and it was replay TV. Um, yeah. It allowed you to skip the commercials. Um, but it, because it's all cloud-based now, it just makes it so much easier. So have you tried uh, on the YouTube TV asking it to give you some learning? It, it, I mean, that one in particular is all broadcast stuff. So it's like mm -hmm. what you would see normally on ABC, NBC. So you get the cooking channel. Um, and yeah. there are like TED Talks probably are on there. Um, but it's separate from YouTube, um, which is a little bit weird in the branding. But um, you could get... You could get Sesame Street and uh, yes. you know, that's, that's educational. Yes. <laughs> Come on, I'm, I'm stretching it here, people. <laughs> Again, unplugging. So important to unplugging. relax and yes, <laughs> take a little trip maybe. Um, use that camera to take some pictures and inspire your team. Um, the last piece of hardware we wanted to mention is this is one of the popular monitors now. It's the LG Dual Up, but it's um, two screens or it's the physical space of two screens in one space. So it's a taller monitor and it basically allows you to have like two browser windows or one big one. Um, they come with either a mount that'll go onto your desk or you can get um, an arm, um, but it's, it's a great way to get more space. So if you're looking to multitask or spread your windows out, um, highly recommend adding a monitor. Monitors today are super inexpensive. I mentioned earlier, you can use an iPad. There's also things like this uh, where you can get a portable screen um, for 200 bucks, um, super thin, and um, they have HDMI, mini HDMI, um, or even USB-C. So if you have a newer laptop, you can plug right into it and you've got instant two screens. They don't need power either, which is great when you're got to travel or move from upstairs to downstairs because the little one wants to take say, over. Yeah, Dan, <laughs> Dan was asking in the actual question yeah. and answer section, that was the first question dropped in. What do you recommend for portable computer displays for on the go screen facilitations? And there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's several brands and um, I, I've, I've had a couple different ones over the years, but I, one negative part, like I use mine every day, all day. And uh, I've noticed they have about a, at least the ones I've interacted with, a two-year lifespan where they start to blink or um, I guess you get what you pay for. So for 200 bucks, <laughs> uh, two years, that's pretty good. That's fairly um, decent. I'll go for that. Yeah. And then the, I hate to do it, but <laughs> if you're looking to add virtual reality, um, the Oculus Quest 2, which is now MetaQuest 2, um, for 400 bucks, um, you're able to get a pair of, goggles headset that you connect to your phone and you're able to experience virtual reality. Um, this is one of the hottest things in learning. Um, people get super excited about it. Uh, it's, yeah. you know, can be a little bit challenged to develop stuff, but if you're looking to play and experience and just get exposed to it, um, highly recommend investing just to start to experiment. Uh, so you don't need to hook it up to a, a the super powerful, uh, computer, you just your uh, use your phone. Exactly. So mm -hmm. in the old days, um, I can go get it if you want me to. <laughs> You'd have these devices and all these cables, and yeah. the headset is wired. I think I have one here. Um, <clears throat> you can actually see the wires. I don't know if you can see it. Look, the yeah, cables yeah. there. Yeah. Well, in um, the older, older days, right? You'd have to put up those stands, and you'd have to make a box, nice. and there'd be cameras and sensors in this big box that you had to stand in, and then put the headset on. All and, built in now. Yeah. yeah, nice Here's to have it all wireless. One. Yes, so you're able just to pop it on, and um, it you know has built-in cameras. So as you look around now, it will show you your environment. Um, it's kind of cool. It looks like a 
a weird sci-fi movie, <laughs> but you don't crash into the sofa or your desk or other elements that you have around the room, uh, which is always helpful. You can make it you know, <laughs> to your next meeting. Uh, oh, it's, man. It's super exciting to play with and experiment with. Yes, VR. Um, you got to love it. You got to love it. <laughs> and then I'm... last item. Um, last things. All right, go for it. Um, headset. Um okay. If you're looking to, again, for your personal, but also for work, if you have the Apple ecosystem, the AirPod 2 line just got introduced um, three months ago, and they're normally 250 bucks. You can find them on Holiday Special now for 200 bucks. Um, you can find the older model for 150 bucks. Um, highly recommend it. It's amazing because if you have the phone, the tablet, and the computer, it will auto switch. It also works with Apple TV. Um, I don't know why I picked my big um <laughs> my big headset i could use my airpods today um and then samsung has um google has them microsoft has them if you're in the windows world or android world um they have them also you know 100 bucks to 200 bucks um usually spending a little bit more money will give you higher quality it'll give you noise cancellation cancellation um which really helps if you want to ignore what's happening around you especially kids <laughs> while you're in that meeting you can focus um very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, over cool. the ear headphones, um, highly recommend the Sony um, X5 unit. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll add that to the uh, link and I'm going to share with you guys really quick. There's our going out um, sounds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, and uh, yeah, for everybody that's been asking, we're going to have a list of all these for you. We'll drop it into the blog post as usual afterwards, uh, the post show blog. And all of that. So all of this stuff that we've been talking about and all the fun things that Nick has. Nick has epic lists of coolness that uh, we will we will get you hooked up with as well. Nick, thank you so mm -hmm. much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Nick. Um, and, of course, if you want to find that blog post, you'll find it on uh, domino.com because Domino is our sponsor. Brent and I both work for, the, for, the, uh, for Domino. If it's of interest, folks, check out uh, Domino One free trial all those cool things on the website too you know if you're, if you're cruising by to catch the blog list yeah maybe spend indeed. a little bit extra time too indeed and just so everybody knows next week is our last uh episode before the holiday break so yep, be yep. sure to join us we got kevin thorne dropping in and doing some uh, fun stuff with us before the end of the year very holiday-ish so good times everybody thanks again nick awesome. Awesome. thank you as always thanks, everybody <laughs> everybody.